experience in Cape May this year, and, and it's just a shame that uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to delay that. So the name of our webinar today, our program is Assessing and Overcoming Barriers to Employment Success and Reintegrating the Formerly Incarcerated. Um, so what this is all about is, is just we're an educational publisher and we have a number of assessments and we're going to talk about two of those assessments today. And this kind of this slide here gives you a little bit of an idea of the types of topics that just publishes on. So we're very focused on things like workplace readiness and job skills and career exploration. And our materials are, are mostly designed for people with employment barriers. And obviously this would include individuals who've been incarcerated or are about to be released from incarceration. So I'm actually going to go through two different assessments today. And each of these assessments touches on each of these topics. So that kind of makes them a little bit uh, unique for us. The first assessment I'm going to show is the barriers to employment success inventory. Now we offer this both uh, in print and in an online uh, format. And I'm going to try to show on the camera what the what the printed format, what the printed form looks like. It's an eight and a half by 11, but it holds out. So I don't know what, you kind of need to get a little bit of an idea of what this looks like. So, and I know when we're working within the correctional facilities ourselves, um, trying to do anything online is basically, basically impossible. And we have, offer all of our materials in standard print formats which is really going to mean that just about everything we offer, not everything, everything we offer is available then. You don't necessarily need to use the internet for any of our materials, but for many of them, you can if you have that as, as an option. So what the barriers to employment success inventory is, there's, you know, brief description there up on the, up on the uh, screen. So it's designed to help individuals identify what their employment barriers are, and how to incorporate strategies to eliminate those obstacles. And as we know, people who've been incarcerated, they're going to experience a number, a number of these barriers. So why is this assessment important to job seekers, to the people taking the assessment, to our program participants? Well, it helps them understand what their barriers are, uh, provide some checklist activities to help them overcome barriers, and then helps them develop a plan. So it really is, is the beginning stages of how to overcome those employment barriers. Here's some examples of some of the barriers that, that the, the participants, program participants have, people who've been, been released from incarceration have. Um, these are things that as a career counselor, or job coach, or case manager, you see people with these issues probably, probably every day. And as we know, uh, people who have more than one barrier have that much more difficulty in getting employed, in entering the workforce and staying in the workforce. So why is the best thing? So we call this assessment, let me show it again, Barriers to Employment Success Inventory, B-E-S-I, we pronounce that. Internally, we've always called it the BESI. So why is the BESI important to career counselors and other practitioners? So it provides a standardized approach so that as you're working with a group of participants, you could uh, perhaps see patterns that develop, uh, maybe uh, be more efficient in the services that you offer. Now, it's self-scored and self-interpreted. Um, so just to provide the assessment to an individual, you really don't need to do anything. Hand them this, and if they have a question, help them. Now, that's the minimum amount that you can do. Uh, obviously, as somebody completes the assessment, there are some steps where maybe some additional information or additional career resources could be appropriate. We do offer a number of those uh, other materials as well. My intention today isn't to give you a long list of the items that we offer, but just know that for to overcome a lot of these barriers, we do have some other pieces that can assist in that regard. Uh, immediate results, right? This is it. This is the entire thing right here. You don't need to send it off somewhere and wait two weeks and have it scored and have it sent back. 
and then uh, the norms have been developed for an adult population. Those norms are available. We have an admin guide on our website, and I'll try to remember to include a link when I follow up with everybody on that. Uh, it's available from gist.com, go to facilitated resources, and you'll see a list of a number of resources as well. So the BSC uh, identifies five barriers. So there's five barriers that this thing works on, uh, and we're gonna go through each of these barriers. Uh, personal and financial, emotional and physical, career decision making, job seeking knowledge, and education and training. So when we talk about personal and financial barriers, these are often the most immediate barriers that we think about. These are the day-to-day -day concerns, okay? This is about earning a sufficient income, about how to find affordable childcare, about having access to transportation, and all those other day-to-day -day things that people have to think about that can get in the way of keeping, of finding and keeping a job. And these are air, air issues, obviously, that people who are being released from incarceration are gonna have as well. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the offender reintegration process with our next assessment. Emotional and physical barriers, sometimes these are kind of invisible or uh, just maybe not, not as obvious because uh, we're talking about emotional issues or maybe stress issues, stressful uh, situations, uh, dealing with anger and depression. We know that our participants all have this. I shouldn't say all have this, many of them do. Sometimes it's not obvious or obvious to the degree that that barrier is. So this assessment is kind of gonna help um, bring that up to the forefront a little bit. When we talk about career decision-making and planning barriers, just know that this is kind of an area of expertise of our company. So we have a number of other assessments and videos and books and pamphlets that can assist in these areas. So what are we talking about uh, when we talk about career decision-making and planning areas, barriers? We're talking about not understanding how your occupational interests or values could connect with a potential occupation or career or job. We're talking about trying to even connect leisure activities to occupations. Um, there's maybe opportunities with small businesses and home bu business opportunities. We want to make people aware of those. Um, barriers regarding effective career decisions, setting goals, developing plans to achieve goals. So that's our third barrier that the uh, assessment addresses. It also addresses barriers regarding job seeking knowledge. And this is another area of expertise and just career solutions. So we have a number of materials that can help somebody learn the job seeking process. Job seeking is a learned skill. It's not something that comes natural. Really, it doesn't come natural to anybody. We, uh, we really have to learn how to find a job. It's a skill. Once you learn job seeking, uh, skills, once you have those skills, moving up and getting better jobs becomes that much easier because it is a skill in itself. Uh, I came across this information. I thought it was interesting and wanted to share it. Uh, the four stages of a job search and um, this, these are from authors uh, that I wasn't aware of, familiar with until I found this information, Edmondson and Borgen. So, you as career counselors and job coaches, you're probably familiar. Uh, you probably have a lot of participants in your programs who exhibit these four stages. Hopefully, they, most of your participants exhibit some enthusiasm. Uh, that's probably not something that is uh, apparent with every participant that you have. And stages two, three, and four, we know those are difficult. Uh, we do have resources that are going to help somebody with these stages of a job search. I like to think that if you have knowledge of how to do an effective job search, you're not going to experience the stagnation, frustration, and apathy as much. Maybe keep that enthusiasm a little bit longer or begin to have the enthusiasm if you didn't have it to begin with. Now, I, I think education and training barriers are something that we kind of think about and acknowledge as employment barriers because uh, people need to know how to do things. They need to have some education, they need to have some skills. So this obviously is an important barrier. We just have a, uh, a separate product line under the Kendall Hunt umbrella called Paradigm. 
education. And these are materials that help with things like digital literacy in Microsoft Office. Um, we're actually going to be uh, developing a new product for correctional facilities that brings some of that digital literacy information uh, with uh, to the correctional facility. We'll be doing some um, uh, webinars on that and some and some uh, other information. We also have some webinars scheduled next week to talk about a uh, another product, a couple new products as well that are going to help in this area. Bob, we have a question. Yes. Uh, would it be possible to get a DVD that could be downloaded and installed on a computer lab, which links the mimic online access, uh, such as uh, we, yeah, so um, we're actually developing a couple different things. Now, when you talk about developing a DVD, we actually have, you know, streaming capabilities, obviously we need an internet connection for that. Um, we are developing a tablet program so that a uh, correctional facility could use a tablet that has a lot of that kind of information preloaded. It's actually gonna include some DVDs. I'm gonna be doing a presentation on, uh, on some of our video information for next week. And once I capture everybody's email address here, I'll be sure to send that information out. One thing also I wanted to, that I was gonna bring up at the end is that anybody who wants to do a deeper dive on what we offer and how we offer it, to schedule a webinar with me that's going to be specific to what your needs are and what you're looking for. So uh, whoever asked that question, my suggestion is send me an email, let's talk offline because there's a, a lot that can be covered um, and, and brought up in a discussion like that and in terms of technical options that are available. Right now, we do not have the capability of providing you content that you can then download and show offline. That's something that we are actually developing at the moment as we speak to be able to offer that hopefully by the end of the year. Part of what we wanna to try to find out is which content of everything we offer, which content is the, would be the most valuable, should, should be the things that we are working on first. So I hope that answers that, that question. It's a broad question and and I do want to uh, once again suggest that maybe offline conversation would be uh, would, would be something to do as well. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Kevin. So when we talk about completing the, bear, the, the actually getting into this assessment, there's four steps and not the easiest thing to show in this version here but uh, I'll try to do that a little bit, uh, kind of show how this, how this works. Step one is basically just answering uh, 50, um, 50 questions relating to employment success. Now we do have, like I said, the printed version as well as the online version. Once I get everybody's email address, I'm gonna send you a code so that you can not only take this assessment, but the other one I'm gonna talk about. So you're gonna to get to take these assessments as a participant would. So you're gonna be able to get to go through all these steps. So I'm not gonna show you each question, uh, but you're gonna be able to, to get that information once you get your access code and take the online version. Step two is where we profile scores. So we not only do a numerical score, but we also, um, we also have low, high, medium scores as well. So we really get the degree of the barrier, how, you know, not just is it low, average, high, so we have that numerical score as well. I thought I saw a question come in about uh, information on the tablet. Um, and uh, thank you for, for your interest on that. Um, that is something that is, is a uh, uh, ongoing uh, development. And we're gonna be touching base on that in a webinar a little bit um, Wednesday. And I'm going to invite everybody to that webinar as well. Um, so step two, profile your scores. Step three is where we identify solutions for each barrier. The assessment includes a checklist. So participants don't have to come up with solutions on their own. 
They can, they're invited to, uh, but the assessment itself includes solutions for each barrier. And as a participant goes through this step, they just don't identify solutions for their high barriers, but for all of their barriers. And then step four is where we develop an, an employment success plan and kind of summarize. So this is where we put together that plan and then next steps. And I do want to switch my screen if I can do that here quickly and show you what a finished version of the assessment looks like. Now this is the online version. It's not the printed version. Printed version, this is all there is and you fold it out and it's all self-contained. There's no other piece. With the online version, if you finish this, you get a PDF that uh, goes through basically the entire, uh, the entire assessment. So I'm just going to scroll this, through this here quickly. I'm not going to land on every page and describe everything. Um, but here's step one. Here's you see uh, some of the questions that are asked. Uh, and then the participant puts in no concern, no concern, some concern, or great concern. So that's how we get those scores. That's how we get those low, medium, average scores. I'm going to scroll through these 50, 50 statement questions. Like I said, you're going to get a code, and, and you can uh, examine these questions uh, as you take the, uh, the assessment. Step two, profile your scores. Once again, just want to point out that you get a numerical score as a level. For this uh, demonstration, we scored high in all five areas. And once again, five areas of, uh, of barriers, personal, financial, emotional, physical, career decision-making, job-seeking knowledge, and education and training. So here's the checklist I mentioned. Uh, participants are, suggest are, are encouraged to check mark at least two, but they can do more. You can add uh, you can add things to this area as well. And once again, you do this for every section for each of the five, regardless of what your score was. Even if you're low, we're going to force somebody to put in some uh, some ideas on over on, on getting better on that barrier. This is where we develop a plan. So we have the goal, the concrete steps. The goal, the concrete steps. We do that for each category. And then we summarize. So then we have our description, our barrier level, our goals, and the concrete steps. For uh, demonstration purposes, the concrete steps are a little brief. We encourage participants to be a little bit more descriptive and what their concrete steps are. This is where a job coach or career counselor or reentry counselor can really help as well. So that is that is the um, that's that's the barriers assessment. Once uh, you finish taking the online assessment, we ask three questions and we compile the results. So here are the results of the barriers assessment. About 85% across the board, users felt more informed, users said they had more insight, and users said the assessment was easy to complete. I want to tell you that this assessment is, is more complex than most of the other assessments we offer. It does take a little bit longer to complete than most other assessments. When you start talking about those concrete steps, those steps could take a lot of time and a lot of thought and a lot of effort. Uh, if somebody's willing to put in that time to do that when they're taking the assessment. Of course, as we know, so much with our participants, you know, their self-motivation is a factor. How much do they want to put into the assessment? So, um, it's not it, it, it's not an easy assessment compared to compared to the rest that we offer, and I do want to be kind of upfront and uh, and honest about that. But if a participant is willing to put in the time and the thought, they really should end up with a really solid plan on how to overcome their employment barriers. So this is a moment to pause, and I'm going to take a sip of water. 
And uh, Kevin, if there's anything else in the chat for me to address, let me know. At this point, there's uh, just a couple comments. Uh, Steve from New Hampshire is going to reach out to you. Uh, looking forward to the tablet program. Uh, Laura, Laura Palmer is interested in printed and tablet options, depending what uh, the up upcoming year may look like. Very good. And uh, yeah. Elvin, Elvin Velez uh, from New Jersey is uh, also looking forward to the tablet as well. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm doing a webinar on Wednesday. I'm um, doing it with one, with one of my coworkers, Jill. You know, we're going to, we have a couple slides on the tablet. Uh, it is something that's still in development. We're going to be looking at here and probably in the next two to three months, maybe reaching out to some uh, uh, facilities for a possible pilot. Uh, the tablet's going to include some digital literacy information and some uh, reentry videos and, and possibly some assessments as well. Uh, still trying to figure out exactly what to offer on the tablet to make it worthwhile. These are tablets, you know, we have to purchase the tablet, so the cost of the tablet's going to be built in, which kind of raises uh, the cost on everything. So you're buying the tablet and the resources. The nice thing from what I understand with our tablets, and maybe this is true with other tablets that you get from other vendors, is that uh, obviously they can be shared among inmates and they sign in with their profile, but uh, each tablet should be able to accommodate several different inmates. Uh, of course, uh, you can only use them one at a time, but you don't have to have one tablet for every inmate. They can share tablets and have unique profiles. So that's, um, hopefully that's considered a feature and not a bug. I know there's a lot of uh, privacy issues and security issues within, within correctional facilities that have to be addressed. Uh, I see part of a question, would it work with uh, other tablets that you already have? That's something that I think we really need to explore right now, no, but uh, I'd love to talk offline with you a little bit more about that and see if there's a way that we can make that possible because we do know that there needs, that we need to be flexible in offering the content as well. Bob, I just have a question for uh, people out there. I, I've been out of corrections for eight years, so I, I get information second third fourth hand um working with cea national it seems like a lot of uh, states in the south uh which really surprised me as compared to the northeast have the inmates have tablets is that true or is um can i just have a couple of people respond from the northeast or wherever and just say uh do t do you have tablets can the guys take or women take their uh, tablets back to the to the cell and work on homework or are there still restrictions on that uh, so yeah, okay, the jpay tablets yeah i'm familiar with those okay okay and someone said that they uh, have tablets in the county jail in P pennsylvania uh, New York has tablets. Uh, they can my, buy music and uh, movies. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Pennsylvania has the GTL tablets. Oh, New Jersey has tablets. Thank you, Christina. Uh, JPay from email and music. All right, this right. is good for yeah. me uh, because I ask people, you know, my on uh, my uh, committee what's going on in New Jersey and most of us are retired. So it's good to hear these fresh voices, young people um, give me more information. It's, it's so good. Uh, Pennsylvania Department of Corrections is exploring enhancing the tablets to be utilized for educational purposes. Um, and I did see a question about licensing content to an existing provider. So that's something that we have looked into. Um, don't have anything concrete on the table just yet. We uh, had talked to JPay in the past about how to figure out how to get our content on a JPay tablet. And uh, I wasn't involved in those discussions, so I don't know exactly 
uh, where that led, except that it didn't lead to, to, to any sort of agreement. Does your program recommend careers that will match a student's academic disposition for future education interests and learning styles? We do have an assessment that helps that. Uh, actually, a couple of different assessments um, uh, that's going to, it, it really matches more of a student's interests as opposed to uh, academic learning capabilities, but a lot of times those interests inform what those academic learning capabilities are. Um, and then there's an assessment called the ONET Career Interest Inventory that matches somebody's uh, career interests with their current or expected future education and then provides a list of occupations. So there is a way to do that, I, probably a little bit different from, from the way the questionnaire was, was asking. Uh, Christina, Computer labs uh, with secure online access, that's something that I know is a big issue. We've uh, looked at a vendor called Atlo that is able to provide that secure connection. And uh, maybe some of you out there are familiar with Atlo. Um, I believe we had somebody from Louisiana, and I know Louisiana is a state that's using Atlo in those discussions. We're continuing to have discussions with Atlo to see if there's a way that we can provide content using their secure, uh, secure secure um, connection. It, it's interesting. Uh, Elvin Velez is the one talking about the computer labs. And, and uh, yeah. when I was uh, working for corrections. At one point, I was his supervisor. And uh, he and the other computer teacher, uh, you know, these new, new cops would come into the jail or a new lieutenant or a captain. And they came from another facility. And they, you know, the guys, they walk into the lab and they say, do you realize they're on the internet? And I said, actually, sir, no, it's the intranet. And they get all excited. What do you mean? Who are they talking to? That guy's working on a uh, you know, website. I said, yes, sir. You know, this is a youth correctional facility. And most of these guys will be going home at some point, And we want them to have career skills. Well, who are they talking to? Because you know, sometimes they were on email. And I said, well, they have right. to learn those skills. Because guess what? There's a whole world out there that these guys have not been exposed to. And uh, that's a different part of our educational program. And well, what's the teacher doing? I, he's looking at a, a movie. I see that one of the students created that movie that they're looking at. And he's, he's grading that paper, you know, or that movie. And he's responding to the emails or he's responding to their classwork. So it was, and then we had, uh, uh, Elvin was connected with another guy in, in the other computer class and they might, Elvin was teaching computer repairs and one of the guys in the computer room had a question how to repair his computer. So he would shoot an email to Elvin and then Elvin would relay the message to one of his students and one of his students would walk over and uh, come over and show him how to fix the, the computer. So it's, uh, it's interesting how when I worked for corrections, you know, it was like pushing that envelope, trying to educate not, not just custody, but also co educate my supervisors that this is a good thing when students are involved in computers or uh, getting their homework and learning about uh, the technology that's out there. Digital literacy, our skills, we talked about the education and training barrier with the other assessment. Digital literacy is huge. You almost have to have it. Uh, we talk about just uh, regular literacy. Um, digital literacy, you can't, and it's, and it's, and it's just going to become more and more important. Um, I'm going to move on and talk a little bit about our next assessment called the Offender Reintegration Scale. So if you can see my camera, I'm showing you this assessment. Um, compared to the first assessment I showed you, it's shorter, briefer. I told you that the first assessment, the barriers assessment, was one of our more complex assessments. And this is more representative of most of our, most of our assessment inventories. So it's much briefer. And, uh, and my discussion on this is gonna take much less time than it did for the, uh, for the first assessment. So we, we call this the ORS for Offender Reintegration Scale. So the ORS helps, um, helps 
identify needs, barriers, and skills deficits users must overcome to successfully reintegrate. Now, this assessment, I guess I should point out, this is specifically for individuals who have been incarcerated or are currently incarcerated and are going to be released shortly. Whereas the first assessment can be used for just about anybody who has an employment barrier, you don't, which includes being incarcerated, but but doesn't necessarily mean that they've been incarcerated. So this one is specific for folks who uh, who have been incarcerated. So just a little little point of emphasis there. So why is the ORS important to counselors? Well, this is going to help a counselor kind of put everybody into a pattern that they're dealing with, just to make it a little bit more efficient to work with groups of people. There's five categories, and we'll see that these categories match up pretty well with the, uh, with the previous assessment. So I did want to, um, did want to talk a little bit about these, uh, about these categories. Um, so when we're talking about basic needs, once again, we're talking about those day-to-day -day needs, where you're going to live, how can you afford living expenses? Um, you might need clothing or different wardrobe to do job interviews or just appropriate work clothes, um, medical and dental care, transportation. So basic needs, kind of those day-to-day -day needs. Step two, job search. We talked a little bit about this with the other assessment. We talked about how we do have some materials to assist here. Effective job search campaign, how to network, um, how to discuss your incarceration in an interview. And I know those uh, those guidelines, even those laws, are different from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Uh, I know some um, some states now have the law where you can't ask that question in an in, a, in an application. It can always be asked in an interview, though, for, as far as I understand. Uh, so how do you how do you talk about that? Should you bring it up? Should you not bring it up? Um, Exploring occupations, using technology and the internet, all those fall on your job search. Family, um, you know, how to be a dependable and family member. Is that a, is that a concern of yours? Uh, how are your family and friends going to view you? When we talk about wellness, we're talking about substance abuse, mental health, anger, stress, all those types of things. And then career development. Once again, we have a number of materials to help here. That's kind of our area of expertise get a clear path. Uh, there was a question earlier about uh, how to kind of align a career with, uh, with, with, what, with your learning achievements. We do have an assessment that kind of helps in that area as well. So the format of this assessment is very similar to the other one. In fact, all of our assessments, the format is are, are very, very similar. That's nice. If you use a number of our assessments, you don't have to relearn how to administer them because they're all basically basically the same. Step one, you answer questions, and then there's different steps after that depending on what the assessment is going to do. Step two, once again, you have a profile, uh, average, high, low, and then a score. It kind of gives you the uh, range there. So the interpreting of the uh, uh, of the scores is kind of where where the assessment where kind of the, the meat of the assessment, if you will. And what we talk about there when we interpret scores is um, you know generally respondents are going to have one or more area where they score high or or maybe in the average category, but on the high average. So these are the areas where we want to spend more time with our respondents and gaining additional skills and getting them more assistance. This is where I talked about where the ORS is good for career counselors and the job coaches. Then you can kind of arrange that training and those additional needs based on what your participants need. And then if you and then if you can have that capability to break them even down into smaller groups to work with a group that has. Uh, concerns in specific areas, that's one way to use the ORS. Once again, self-interpreted data, which basically all of our assessments are self-interpreted. But the nice thing about when we're doing self-reports is that it does, um, 
it does help the individual understand where their areas are, where they're most concerned. What we want to try to do is give participants, uh, have them be a part of their reintegration planning process. So they take the assessment, they understand why their scores are the way they are. Hopefully that can, makes a connection with them and they can be more motivated and be, um, uh, be more motivated to be a part of that reintegration planning process and uh, just have an idea, a better idea of what they need to do to achieve those uh, reintegration goals that they may have. So I hope all that makes sense as to the way the assessment can be used and the way it's interpreted and, you know, what the counselor role could be. Uh, we know that not all programs have the same amount of resources or time to spend with their uh, program participants. Uh, best case scenario, you're able to kind of dive down into smaller groups. The assessment does include uh, an action plan, very similar to the previous assessment checklists from the, from the form. Efficacy, we can see here that our, that our rate on this one is actually better than this assessment. Even though this assessment is our best selling, most popular assessment, well, this, this one, you know, only goes to part of our audience, but it's shorter. Um, and I think because of that, and it's a little more accessible, I think that's why we see some of these scores a little bit higher. 91% of users felt more informed. 87% of users said they uh, gained strategies. And look at that score for ease of use, 95%. And you can see it. It is easy. And as you know, as we went through it, we went through it in, you know, probably less than 10 minutes, whereas we took probably 20 minutes to go through that first assessment. That's the idea behind this assessment is that it is simple, it is brief, but it gives somebody a starting plan on how to reintegrate and it gives the counselors an idea of how to work with their uh, program participants as well. I'm going to leave my contact info up on the screen for anybody who wants to jot it down and reach out to me offline. I believe Kevin's going to provide uh, emails to every attendee, so I'll be able to follow up. You don't have to request a digital sample. I'll send that out to you. Uh, and if you want a demo of our online platform, please let me know. I prefer to do those demos for each individual organization, just because there's different ways that an organization would want to use that platform. Uh, when you get your digital sample, I'll be sending it using the online platform, so you'll get an idea a little bit of how a participant would use that platform. Now, I know for those of you who are actually in correctional facilities, doing using the assessment online is probably not something that you can do. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to still take the assessment online and that way you know exactly what each of the steps are in each of the questions. But you can always buy the print. Okay, we always have the print available. Cost wise, the print in the online is the same. Unfortunately, we do have to charge shipping when we do the print assessments. So I do want to um, see if there's anything else in chat at this time. And I think, I think that's my last slide. Let me check here. Yes, that is my last slide. So, Kevin, is there anything else in chat that we want to uh, that, that we want to address before we before we can conclude? Okay, uh, Dr. Alba from Rhode Island has a general question for everyone. Uh, he says, in Rhode Island, they have uh, the. the Inmates have uh, music players for songs. Uh, he would love to be to attend a webinar that will show tablets that have preloaded A, B, G, D, E, L, L, E, S, L software. And he says uh, his question is, and this is a general question to the participants: uh, Do any of the tablets mentioned uh, earlier uh, have preloaded educational software? Or can the tablets be loaded with educational software for a site license fee? Uh, 
So I don't think that's a question specifically for me. I know there's other tablets out there from other right. vendors. Um, I don't know specifically what's what's available uh, okay. off the top of my head. I know with our tablet, the way we envision it is that uh, it'll be preloaded, and I don't know if additional materials will be uh, available to to load. Uh, we're still kind of doing our ongoing development with that, uh, but. Uh, Dr. Alba, when when we're uh, a little bit more along the lines, I'd like to uh, connect with you and uh, see if maybe there's there's a way to to uh, collaborate, uh, perhaps on a pilot of some sort. Uh, Patrick Thouse uh, from uh, New Jersey says that uh, inmates can order books, but no current educational supplies in New Jersey Department of Corrections. My screen just changed. I'm not sure why. Yeah, mine did too. <laughs> uh, I think that was. I think that might have been. I think that might have been me. Okay. All right. Because uh, I was like, where did where did my chat go? <laughs> you know, it's so funny because sometimes um, the chat is my controls. Sometimes they're up above, and sometimes they're down below. I can. Right. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and, yep. Zoom, Zoom is funny that way. That's one of the reasons I prefer go to meeting. I think I think that can, you 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 have a little bit more uh, options with the control panel. You can put it anywhere on your screen, and with Zoom, okay. it's either below or on top, and you can't put it anywhere else. Now I was trying to do go to meeting with college friends about six weeks ago, trying to figure it out whether I was going to do Zoom or if I was going to go to meeting or something else, and it ended up. Um, Everybody needed either Chrome or Gmail. And my yeah, colleagues were Chrome. like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm like, come yeah. on, it's free yeah. Gmail. It's free Chrome. So that's why I ended up going with Zoom. Thank you, Elvin. Yep. Um, uh, let's see. So, yeah. let's see uh, NJDOC, Christina is saying, is uh, currently looking into those type of educational materials for tablets especially after COVID-19. Um, right. Jose, also from New Jersey, at, uh, DOC, says, what about uh, vocational education? Yeah, now we, now, now just doesn't really get into a lot of the vocational uh, education materials, except for digital literacy and Microsoft Office training, and with one of our other product lines. And we also have uh, materials for things like pharmacy technician and some allied health careers. And this is a, a suite of materials that have been developed for like career colleges and community colleges. And that's the, uh, uh, that, that's the market for those materials, but they could be delivered really, really to anybody. Uh, just because that's the primary audience doesn't necessarily mean that that's that's the only people who uh, who could use them. So I'm seeing a lot of thank yous. I, 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 I'm having problems uh, actually viewing the chat except for when the question is first entered. So uh, Kevin, I don't know if you can, if there's other questions that I haven't seen uh, that we need to, that we need to address. Uh, do you want to, like I said, I'll be getting, I, I believe I'll be getting everybody's email address. So I'll yes. be sending out just a, th a short thank you email. I believe Kevin will be sending out a recording or making that available in some cases. Right. Uh, my email address and direct phone number, which you know rings right here on my cell phone. This is the only phone I have, so I'm real easy to get a hold of. Um, just give me a call. Uh, if you get my voicemail, I'll call you back. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a little bit old school in that I still like to talk to people. Um, and, uh, and, and look at my voicemail. <laughs> I know a lot of people these days don't bother with voicemail, but uh, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit old school in that regard. So uh, Kevin, I, I think this is it. This has been a great session. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. I'll, we'll be doing, my company will be doing a couple webinars next week that might be of interest and I'll make sure everybody gets uh, uh, information on that. The one I'll be doing on Wednesday, we're going to be talking once again about the ORS a little bit, but also some other materials as well that we did not uh, that we did not cover here today. I 
webinars like this. I just don't want them to be just a complete product presentation. I'd rather do right. a deep dive on a couple of different things. Well, we really appreciate your time, Bob. And uh, I know I learned quite a bit. I, I really also enjoy the interaction with uh, people that work at facilities that I used to work at, but I was, I'm an old school, real old school guy. Uh, I'm long out of those facilities, but I really appreciate the information um, about what's happening in New Jersey and ar around the, the country. Um, just to let everybody know, next Friday, uh, Kevin's going to do some volunteer work with National Park Service. Uh, I have to suffer. I got to go kayaking on the Delaware, make sure the Delaware is clean and ready for the summer fun. And then Saturday and Sunday, I'll be working Father's Day weekend on trails up in uh, the Poconos. So we are not going to have a session next next Friday. I'm sorry about that, but hopefully by this time Friday, I'll be on on the river somewhere. Um, so instead, I'm going to do a double dip on Tuesday. So I know we're switching up a little bit, but Tuesday we're going to do tape tutoring with uh, Christina Miller at 10 a.m. That's June 16th, and at 1 p.m. we're one of our uh, DOC educators has volunteered his time. His name is uh, Jason Ravonsky, and he's going to do motivation in the classroom. So I really appreciate when teachers uh, come out and say, "Okay, I'm going to I'm going to share and be a trainer." Uh, don't be shy. You got to start somewhere. As I said, you know, May 15th was my first experience being on Zoom, and I think we're getting better and better, and I really appreciate everybody's support out there, and uh, just have a wonderful weekend, and Bob, thank you again. Everybody be safe and be healthy, and I'll be sending out My your- My pleasure, Kevin, thank you. Not a problem, and most importantly, I will be sending out your certificate sometime this weekend, and a copy of the uh, recording, so in case you, you miss a part of it, or you wanna hear it again, or you want to share with your peers what's going on, share with your supervisor, uh, let them know about what Bob is doing, because I, as I said, I learned quite a bit uh, today, and which is great. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Bob. Thank you all. Thank you both. Bye-bye. All right. See you, everybody. Thank you.